Today on Clearing the Clutter Inside and Out, we're talking about decluttering your car. Is your car a rolling trash can on wheels? Can you easily find what you need in your car? Are you losing gas mileage because your car is so loaded down with stuff you aren't using? Learn how to clear some physical clutter as we begin our month focusing on 10 minute decluttering tips. Ready to clear your clutter and share your gifts with the world? Every Tuesday at 1 p.m., join award-winning professional organizer, author, and certified life coach, Julie Caraccio, on clearing the clutter inside and out, as she teaches you how to navigate the waters to declutter your life. Julie Caraccio destroys the box and examines clutter in all areas, physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, energetic, relationships, health, finances, and more. Hey everyone, I have made a change, not really a change to the podcast, kind of a, a deletion. If you have been listening to the podcast for a while, you'll know that since I started the first July, I do 10 minute decluttering tips. And you're like, hold up, what? It's June, what's going on? Prior to doing the podcast, I did a weekly international internet TV show where I'd go to a studio to record. It was called Reawaken Your Brilliance. I love that name so much that I adopted it for my business. I had, my business had been healing through organization and I changed it to Reawaken Your Brilliance, which is a big pain in the butt to do. However, I was so, this just felt so right for the business. So anyway, I had done that and over three years, and was really burned out. I'd drive to a studio, and it's a lot. I felt really moved to do the podcast, and it's a little bit easier in the sense that I can pre-record, because I film this, I write it, I have to write, film, edit, get it uploaded, blah, 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 blah. So you need some lead time on that. Since beginning the podcast in September 2014, I should have probably thought this out a little bit, but I'm going to take a break. I have decided that I'm going to take two breaks in the year, and the first one is coming up. I'm going to take six weeks off and be back mid-August. I will let you believe it's August 21st. I'll do a reminder on the last episode for this month. I'm also going to take off around the holidays six weeks. I love this podcast. I'm happy to do it. It's my way of giving back to the community, but I need to make sure I don't get burned out, and we're going on almost four years this September. So I made it almost four years without a break and it's a weekly podcast plus a bonus. It's just a lot of work. Also, because I believe and tell my clients, you know what, you need breaks. You need to have fun. You need to have joy in your life. So if you want, take the six weeks off with me. If you want to keep going, you're going to have plenty of the archives to listen to. By the end of June, I will have had 250 episodes. You can download them again. You can watch them on YouTube. And actually, I'm going to encourage you, depending on where you are, to listen or watch again. That's the great thing about YouTube. Watch it anytime, podcast, download it anytime. I read almost every year the book Eat, Pray, Love by Elizabeth Gilbert. Love that book. It really resonates with me. And I kind of laugh because every time I read it, there's something new that I noticed about the book. Oh my gosh, how could I have not gotten that when I've read it so many times? And that's kind of how I feel about the podcast. You might not have been ready to hear something. You might be more open now. You might not have been right timing for you to hear something. And so I'm gonna encourage you during this break to go ahead and listen or watch what you need to, or take a break. As we're not going to have July podcast this year, I'm bumping up the 10-minute decluttering tips. The purpose for this is to have short, focused things that you can accomplish in 10 minutes. One of the things I tell my clients all the time who say to me, I don't organize, I don't know how to clear clutter, and I say, yeah, you do. We just need to build up your muscles a little bit. If you're new or you're struggling, or even if you're an old hand at decluttering, these are just going to get you some tips to get you going 
and get those muscles moving. Today's episode was inspired because I found a Diet Coke bottle under the front of my car seat. Now, if you've been listening, you know I gave up soda January 1st. So it's apparently been a while. And sometimes when I would go to see clients, I'd grab a Diet Coke, especially if I had to travel a bit. Or I don't know, maybe it's from the, going to the beach last year. Who knows? It's one of those times when the bottle gets stuck in underneath one of the seats. Anyway, who knows how long it had been there. And I'm like, okay, Julie, it is time to clear and declutter your car. Now, for me, the truth is I can declutter my car in about 10 minutes. I don't have a lot. It's just me that drives it. Sometimes Tony does. I have emergency stuff in the back. I have all my reusable bags together. So it really just needs a vacuum and going under the seats and finding things. So for me, I can do this in 10 minutes. And you might not be able to. With summer coming up, I think it is a great time to go ahead and clear your clutter out of your car. And you know, when you feel good when you clean out your car, I think anytime you do decluttering, you feel good. We just decluttered our pantry and it felt like, wow, we had this huge weight lifted. If you do a lot of traveling, you're probably going to want to do this on a more regular basis, but you'll feel really good once it's done. So let's talk about decluttering your car. Summer's here and you may have trips coming up. So it's a great time to get your car in shape. Oftentimes, when we're decluttering and getting organized, we overlook the car. We throw trash on the ground and it's an afterthought. If your car isn't too bad, you can definitely get this done in 10 minutes. If you have a lot of junk, it might take you longer. So break it into little 10 minute increments. For example, do the trunk. Do the front driver's seat or the front of the car, the middle of the car. Most of those, for most of us, are going to be able to be chunked down into 10-minute jobs. And if that's the case, then do 10 minutes every day this week. And then at the end of the week, you have a clean, decluttered, and organized car. I found this fact very interesting. An extra 100 pounds in your vehicle could reduce your miles per gallon by about 1%. The reduction is based on the percentage of extra weight relative to the vehicle's weight and affects smaller vehicles more than large ones. I didn't take the time to figure out what you'd be saving, but in my philosophy, it all adds up. You're saving money, you have to purchase less gas, and it's better for the environment. So that might be a motivating factor for some of you because the reality is, you might have 100 pounds plus in the back of your car or throughout your car. Tired of losing money because you aren't organized? Overwhelmed because you missed a soccer game because calendars weren't coordinated? Stressed out because you can't find what you own? Go to reawakenyourbrilliance.com to learn how Julie Caraccio can support you. How to declutter your car. I'm going to suggest that you first pull your car out of the garage. This will make it a lot easier. You'll have some space, you'll have some room. Get a tarp or a blanket to lay stuff down, as well as a garbage bag and your recycling bin. First thing I'm going to suggest you do, empty everything from the car. Do this section by section, be methodical. Don't start in the driver's seat and then, hey, I'm going to run back to the trunk. Go through one section at a time. Driver's seat, passenger seat, the next row, if you have a third row, the trunk or the back of the car. Make sure you get underneath the seat where soda or pop, as I would say growing up, because you might have bottles hidden there or trash. I, I will admit this, that we had to take Athena to the vet this morning and she is getting dental work and my husband so i drive he's in back with athena and we and we drive back and get out of the car and tony's like uh-huh empty reese's peanut butter cup wrapper i'm like it's from at least a month ago i'm off sugar now so 
no sweets. But again, there, I hadn't cleaned the car. It's time for me to do it. So get all of that trash out. Make sure you find what's hidden. And yes, guilty party raising my hand. I have trash in the car. That's why I had this as an episode because I need to do it. When I write and record these episodes, they inspire me as well. So we're going to get all the trash, get, and if it's bottles, you're going to be able to recycle. So what I'm going to suggest as you're going through each section, you should be able to immediately throw away trash, such as candy wrappers, and put soda bottles, rinse them out, especially if it's summertime because you don't want everything being junky and to attract insects and all that gross stuff. So you're decluttering your car, put trash in the trash bag right away and put recyclables in your bin. Again, this is going to save you a step because if we can do it efficiently, it makes the job go much more quickly. So what doesn't go in the trash can or the recycling bin, lay it out on the blanket. Once you've emptied the car, take the time to vacuum, scrub off any stains and wipe down the car. Now, you always have the option of taking your car to the car wash if you don't want to do it yourself. And maybe that's the best option. Take it there, get it done. Don't, however, do all the cleaning and scrubbing until you have taken the time to purge everything so they can vacuum well and get everything clean because they're not going to take out the trash most times. And you want to be able to get under the seats and you don't want bottles or trash or anything there. After the car is clean, now is time to put everything back. Now, a couple things here. You've already done the garbage and recycling. Go through and ask yourself, do I really need to put this thing back in the car? Again, you might be surprised with what you've pulled out. Oh my gosh, I didn't realize that I had that. Do you listen to that CD that's in the car? Do you really use that tool? One of the tools I have, they were going out of business and the likelihood of this ever happening is minuscule, but for $2.95, I got peace of mind. And that is a little tool that if you are submerged underwater, you can one, cut the seat belt and you, you take the tool and you go, bam, it's got a little point on the end and it can break the windshield. That's something I have right in the front compartment that I'm able to reach. It was worth it to have that tool for me just for peace of mind. Push yourself here. You want to really ask, are you using it? Are you needing it? If not, find a home somewhere else. So what we're going to put back in the car is only what we really need. So as we're putting things back, let's take the time to organize it. Put like with like. For example, all of my reusable bags are in the back passenger side of the car. So I have different bags of various size, but they're all together and they're in one spot. And when I'm finished, that's where they go back. So you're going to want to do that with the items that you're putting back in the car. I have an emergency kit and a little shovel that is in the trunk, the back of the car. I know where that is, it's easily accessible. Utilize the pockets that you have in the car in the glove compartment. Maps are a great thing to put in the pockets. I also have, I really don't need it here in Raleigh, but I've just gotten the habit of a little ice scraper for the car. So that fits nicely in the pocket, it's easily to access. So again, maps, things of that nature. Some things you're probably going to want to keep in the glove compartment are your registration and your manual. Things if you have to access easily, you get pulled over by a cop, boom, you have it right there, all the information that you need. And I mentioned that I keep the emergency bag if I'm stuck in a storm. I once driving home to West Virginia got stuck in a storm. It was the worst driving experience I ever had. I was by myself. And after that, I have an emergency kit. I'm going to encourage you to have one as well. You live in California, have an earthquake kit. Whatever it is where you need, do some research and figure out what, depending on the area you live in, 
because you might need some special things. If you have time, check the air in your tires and see if you need to add any. It's also a good time while we're sprucing up the car to see if it's time for your car to be serviced or get the oil changed. Check out episode number 201 from September 2017, Are You Prepared for an Emergency? for tips if you choose to have an emergency pack in your car. Take actions. Pull the car out of the garage. Remove everything from the car. Throw trash away. Recycle recyclables. Sift through all of your items and put back only what you truly need. Organize all the items that are left. Remember, like with like. Purchase anything that might help you organize the car, such as an over the seat organizer or a bin in the back of the car. Consider creating an emergency kit. On our next episode, we're talking about whose voice is that? Go out, clear the clutter to create the life you choose, deserve, and desire. Ready to live a more joyful and fulfilling life? Sign up for our newsletter at reawakenyourbrilliance.com and receive a free copy of 10 Steps to Clearing Clutter Inside and Out. If you enjoyed today's episode, please rate and review Clearing the Clutter Inside and Out. See you next Tuesday at 1 p.m.